Well, hey folks, welcome back to the channel. I am Brian, and today we're gonna be taking a look at this a cuckoo, a cow cow. I, I really have no idea how you pronounce the name, but we're gonna go with a cuckoo for the sake of this video. But this is their version of the 12.8 volt lithium iron phosphate 100 amp battery. It comes in a little bit different case and it clocks in at $549. So let's take a closer look at it and see if it's actually worth that money. Okay, so to start off, you can probably tell it is a little bit different case than most of the standard China Boat Express batteries that you see. This is an all steel case and it has a pretty easily removable top. Got screws down here on all sides and it's got some spring loaded handles. Now, it's kind of weird. Normally I see these handles actually flipped around when you pick it up, but it appears to be kind of opposite, but they actually work pretty well for, for picking it up. Now this thing weighs 30 pounds. We're looking at a pretty standard size. So it's about 12 and three quarter inches long, eight and a half inches tall, and six and five eighths inches front to back. It does come equipped with these little terminal covers that just kind of pop off. And I do like the fact that, that it does come with these because it's nice to keep these terminal bolts protected. But it does have M8 terminal bolts. Go ahead and get these slid back on. And it weighs 30 pounds. And these actually are not stickers. It's some type of paint that's on this case. So these are not going to rub off if that you know means anything to you. but. No stickers whatsoever on this battery case. So that's kind of it as the close-up of this battery. And again, it's kind of built, it's, it's pretty heavy duty. It weighs 30 pounds, so it's a little bit heavier than all of my other 12.8 volt, 100 amp hour batteries. But that's to do with the all metal casing around it. And it is gonna be a little bit more heavy duty compared to some of those plastic cased lithium iron phosphate batteries. So if you need an application where this thing has the potential to get dinged up or, or you know moved around a lot, this might be a good option. I don't know if that equates to the $549 price tag being you know, fair and adequate, but it is gonna be a little bit more durable. This thing is touted as having, of course, grade A cells. It's rated at 6,000 cycles to 80%, and that's at 100% depth of discharge. So if you only discharge this thing down to like 50%, you can double that life cycle count. It's really easy. You don't have to drain this thing all the way down go 50%, then charge it back up. You're going to keep these batteries healthier for a lot longer. This does not have low temp charge protection, which I was kind of surprised about when I saw the price tag. So keep that in mind, no low temp charging protection. It does have a Bluetooth app though, however, so it is capable of being monitored from your cell phone via an app, either Android or iOS. And I will show that to you folks when we get into the testing of it, what the app looks like and you know what all you can see on the app. You can connect up to 16 of these batteries in a 4P4S connection. So you can, again, if, if, if anyone ever has the need to go buy 16 of these batteries, it is capable of 4P4S connection and it's got a seven year warranty. Now, seven years sounds great, but however, I don't know how long a cuckoo is going to be around to actually honor that warranty. But right now they are stating this battery, bumper to bumper, seven year warranty. It's got a 50 amp charge current, max charge current. It's got a 100 amp max discharge current. So basically guys, what we're gonna do, I'm gonna get this thing topped off. We're gonna charge it up and I'm gonna hook it up to my test station over here. And we're gonna run a few tests on it and see if it performs well enough and if this battery might be useful for you in an application where you need a little bit more heavy duty type battery. Okay, so we have topped off this battery to fully charge. We are sitting right now with 13.91 volts. I have gone ahead and cleared out all of the data on this Bluetooth monitoring shunt that's gonna help me determine the amount of capacity I'm able to pull out of this thing. So let's just get this started and get the inverter cut on get my light array started and I'll show you the shunt app. So hopefully when that focuses, you can make out that we're pulling 23.2 amps out of that light bulb array. Battery's at 99% now and that estimated amp hour is at 0.1. So I will come back and see what we were able to pull out of the battery when that thing dies. All right, well, we have hit low voltage disconnect as you can hear. Let's get that cut off. 
So with all that said and done, I was able to get 101.79 amp hours out of that battery. Right there. All right, so I have had batteries that actually did squeeze out a few more amp hours, but I'm gonna go ahead and give this a pass since it's rated at 100 amp hours and we got, let's say, 102 amp hours out of it. So it is capable of producing at least 100 amp hours. Okay, good morning. So round two of this testing, and we're gonna make sure that this thing can handle at least 100 amps continuously discharged for around 10 minutes and make sure that the battery doesn't get hot, everything is you know cooking properly. So to do that, I've got my standard heat gun right here that we're gonna get cut on. And I'm gonna show you the app for this battery. And you can see here that the battery's right now sitting at 13.3 volts. I'm pushing around 28 amps or 625 watts off of this setting right here. So let's get this thing cranked up to around 100 amps or as close as we can to it. There's 108, let's dial it back down just a hair. These heat guns are so finicky to try to dial it in really, really accurately. Okay, I'm just gonna keep it here. It's fluctuating between 95 and around 102 amps. So I'm gonna get my stopwatch going here. And let's let this thing run for around 10 minutes. There we go. Okay, so you can see we're still pulling around 102 amps and we're getting close to the 10 minute mark. We're at nine minutes and 45 seconds. So as we hit 10 minutes, let me make sure, I mean, this battery is, it's a little warm. I mean, it's 113.2 degrees, if that's gonna focus right there. But I think it's performing fine. Now, let's see what we can do to get this BMS to trip. So I'm gonna cut this heat gun all the way up. And that's going to put me to 135 amps. I'm going to keep this little stopwatch going here. So we're going good at 135 amps. Let me plug in my light array. Did not like that at all. So we stopped at 10 minutes and 55 seconds and it tripped right at around 140 amps. All right, well, there you have it. So it runs fine at its rated 100 amp hour max discharge rate. Anything over that, around 140 amps, you're gonna get a few seconds and that is it. So do not expect to get a really high power draw device to, to kickstart off of this battery. This is just used for continuously running around 100 amps. Nothing much more than that. Some of these batteries can support up to 200 to 300 amps for about five seconds. This is not one of those, so do not use this as a starting battery, but it's fine if you just have a power device that needs around 100 amps or less. So that's really all the testing I'm gonna do on this battery. Since it does not have a low temp charging protection feature built into it, there's no need to stick it into my freezer because that wouldn't do us any good. Now for the price of this, 549-ish dollars without any coupons, I think they should have included a low temp charging feature on this battery. So who is this battery for? Well, you know, if, if you are one that needs a more heavy duty battery, this is definitely your go-to because of the solid steel construction of this battery. And if you're confident enough to work on your own batteries, this is easily, I guess, serviceable because you can remove the top lid on this. It's just held on with screws all around the side. So you can work on this if you are comfortable enough doing that. You know, it got over 100 amps on the discharge test and it ran continuously for over 10 minutes at 100 amps, which is what it's rated for. So, you know, it didn't do anything bad and it didn't do anything outstandingly great. I think for the price of this unit, you have to have a really specific need for a heavy duty type cased battery. If it's going to be banging around something or if it's going to be next to something that might damage it, I think this might be your choice. But Again, 549 bucks is a lot for a 100 amp hour battery. So I would like to see the price on this come down just a little bit. I can't knock it for anything other than the price. So uh, yeah, there you go, gang. That is the Akuku, a cow cow, however you want to call it. 
12.8 volt, 100 amp hour battery. So guys, until next time, see you soon. Take care.